So he walks into a title company and he says, Hey, Jennifer, um, I was wondering, can I get a copy of my HUD statement, my, my closing statement when I closed that loan about two months ago? And she's like, yeah, sure. No problem, Anthony. Mm-hmm. And just then he said, I could hear the sirens of the police. And he goes, what's that? Do you hear that? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, I do. He goes, I wonder what happened. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and I'm here with John Boziak, and we're going to talk about the Anthony Curcio story, also known as the DB Tuber and the Thomas Crown affair, and we're going to go over it. I know Anthony from being in prison with him. I think you were in prison. I don't know if you remember being in prison. I think you were there the same time as him. I think so. Yeah, I just don't really, I don't really remember him. Maybe you know, he was only there for a little while and left. He, yeah. What, he, year, what year did he get released? I, this would have been probably two thousand and because I didn't get maybe two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Okay, I didn't get to Coleman until two thousand twelve. Uh, no, I'm saying he was at Coleman. I think two thousand maybe eleven or twelve. Uh, I think he got he got probably arrested in two thousand nine or ten. I think mm. he probably then I, he went to another prison. Then he went to Coleman, so probably around there he was there. Oh, in yeah, Coleman. so we were there at the same time. You may have been there at the same time. I don't think he got very much time. I think he got like five years or something, which we can— we When's can, the last time you've talked? Have you talked to Anthony recently? You know, we trade text messages through like Instagram or through— t- You know, every three to six months. Mm-hmm. He's just He just doesn't—you know, I'm not good at responding a lot of times to people, and he's not good at responding, and, yeah. you know— He's like completely changed his life. So, and hey, where is he at in the Northwest? He's in Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Yeah, up there in the Northwest. That's right. Anthony was born in Seattle, Washington. Mm-hmm. He went to high school. He married Emily, which is his wife. Uh, it met her in high school. They dated through high school. Married her. Like totally in love with this chick. He. Uh, they have. I think. I want to say they have two kids. Mm-hmm. Um. He became a real estate agent. He started flipping houses. Now, this is all in 2006, 2007. So by 2007, coming up on 2008, in 2008, he's a real estate agent. So he's real, he's selling houses, mm-hmm. and he's also buying houses, renovating them, and selling them. But the market starts to take a downturn, and he's got a ton of money. All of his money's wrapped up in several houses that he's trying to flip. And nothing selling. And then the banks, of course, in 2008, they stop lending to people for months. So months go by and they're almost completely just not like the the guidelines are so outrageous. They just, you can't get a mortgage. So he can't get rid of his properties. Mm -hmm. Property prices start to plunge. He's way upside down on his house, on several houses that he's trying to flip. And he decides that he's going to... uh, rob a bank but he doesn't want to get caught now here's mm-hmm. the interesting thing about his story is that the book that was written mm-hmm. and the there was an article that was in uh gq magazine it was written by a guy named uh, david um shoot uh i forget the guy's name his last name but anyway this uh this reporter um he wrote a, a an article about him mm-hmm. And in, in the article, like he re- really just focuses on the one crime. But when you know, I know, I know Anthony, and you know, I've talked to him a bunch of times. And he was like, it, when he re- when he had written the book with another guy, his memoir, or, or actually it was, it was a true crime book. Uh, he had written that book. He was upset because he's like, they make it seem like they made it seem like he got addicted to drugs and he committed this one crime. Mm-hmm. And he's like, the truth is, he is. I've done other robberies. Like there were other crimes before that, but they very much wanted to turn his story into an after-school special, which he didn't like. He's like, it was an evolution, where you know, first right. of all, no criminal comes out of the gate and immediately comes up with a hundred million dollar Ponzi scheme. Like it's an evolution of of yeah. small crimes. That of course, right? So. He, he's like, it was an evolution. Like, one time I did this. One time I robbed this place. One time I burglarized this place. One time I robbed this place. Like, it slowly evolved. But that's not, they didn't focus on any of those other robberies. They really basically said, hey, this is a guy who played sports. This is a guy who got a scholarship, went off to college. Uh, same college I think his wife, his future wife went to. Mm-hmm. Uh, he ended up hurting his knee. And I want to say he hurt his knee and he got addicted to painkillers. He, he somehow or another got 
injured and start was prescribed oxycodone Mm -hmm. or Vicodin. And then I think he started doing oxys or Vicodin. And then when the prescription ran out, he ended up intentionally injuring himself to try and get more pills. He was a big drinker anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, he already had kind of an addictive personality. If you know the guy, like he's a super cool guy, but he's also semi-bipolar. Like Mm -hmm. his emotional swings are up and down. Yeah. Uh, So, so he, anyway, the crime that makes his, his whole thing or his whole story amazing is that he robbed an armored car the same day that the government got that all the banks got the tarp money mm-hmm. right so the entire entire economy is crashing congress ends up um they end up voting on the tarp program mm-hmm. which is the trouble asset relief program was that planned by the way yeah, um i think or we just got lucky i don't you know what it is i i don't think he did plan it i could be wrong but i don't think he did plan it for two reasons one they made a big deal out of it and he didn't think it was a big deal i think he kind of was like i was planning on robbing it It just happened to be the same time but the other thing is he got way more money than he thought Mm -hmm. like he thought he was going to get like let's say roughly a hundred thousand dollars he ended up getting like almost four hundred thousand by accident because they were delivering like he didn't expect that Mm -hmm. he told me i didn't expect that much money so what happened was this is the thing about what makes the scam so amazing. It's is that genius. It's genius. Absolutely Absol- genius. Absolutely. It's it's worthy of a Hollywood Hollywood film. It, it really is. Yeah. It, it should be a Hollywood film. Although I think he's intentionally shut it down many times. You, you have to think this guy's like rebuilt his entire life under a complete, we, which we can talk about, under a completely different aspect. Mm-hmm. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video. And if you're interested in buying a painting from me, my contact information is in the description box. Back to the video. Mm-hmm. Um, so he had a, uh, two kids, married to Emily, uh, but things are going bad. They're about to lose their main house. He's behind on the mortgage. He's being foreclosed on. His other two houses, which he's borrowed money on and has all his money wrapped up in, mm-hmm. he's upside down on. He can't. He, he's going under. So he decides he's going to rob a bank, but he doesn't want to go into the bank. He's like, you know, you have to tell a lot of these places, you know, going in, like, it's a major problem. It's one way in, one way out. You can't see around you. Like, it's it's fucked up. He's like, it's easier if you rob the um, the armored truck. So he decides he's going to start. He's like, but, you know, of course, most, most bank robbers get the money, but they just don't get away. Like, that's the problem. He's like, you know, getting the money, great. Like, it's getting away that's a problem. So he ended up, first what he did was he staked out, he told me this later, by the way, I'll tell you something. He actually knew a guy that worked at, at, I don't know if it was, I'm going to say Brinks. Mm -hmm. He worked, I don't know that it was Brinks, but I'm going to use Brinks. He actually knew a guy that worked in the Brinks warehouse. Mm -hmm. That guy had explained to him the procedures, the whole thing, and that these guys are told to just give them the money. Like, they're not going to fight you. Really? Um, and I've talked to a several bank robber. I wrote a story about a guy, about a bank robber, and he said the same thing they all say. He said, but the problem is, is you've got a lot of these guys who are like, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm going to pull my gun. I'm going to yeah. shoot at them. I'm going to, like, they're, it's like, they're superheroes. Mm. They, they think they're superheroes. Ex-military, fucking, yeah, yeah right, those kind the of guys. Worst, right, where there's other guys who are just like, man, I, don't, I ain't getting shot for... 11 bucks an hour. Take it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Especially when they tell you to give them the money. So he's talking to his buddy, and his buddy's telling him, look, we deliver it this time and this time, this time. And this. So his buddy tells him about one route where the guy, they're always get this one place. It's got a lot of money. It's in a nice area. They always get like $100,000 like mm-hmm. on this day. It's great. You run up. It's one bag. You know, it's what, like one or two, like one bag. You run out, and the guy walks right in. Like all you got to do is grab the bag and run. Anthony also doesn't want to use a gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like, I, I didn't want to use a gun. You can get a lot more in a lot more trouble if you use a gun. Definitely enhancement. Absolutely. Um, plus, they're gonna, there's a good chance that now you're in a shootout. <laughs> you know, like so people are going to shoot at you if you don't have a gun. Yeah. Um, so once again, he he really just it's as far as just being athletic. You know, and he was he was a football star. Like he can grab something and run, and you're not catching him. Guy's six foot one. Mm-hmm. He's lean. He's in good shape. So 
he stakes out, one, his buddies told him what the routes are. Two, he stakes out a Bank of America, which was one of the largest companies to get a bailout, by the way. So he stakes out the Bank of America. He goes and he parks in an alleyway. He puts on a mask, one of these little masks, right? He would grab, he said, I, I had, he had to figure out how could he just kind of hang out. How could I hang out and watch this place mm-hmm. without raising suspicion? So what he did was he got one of those little Cadillac, what we call them in prison, Cadillacs, right? The, the, the sweeper thing. You have a little sweeper and you have a little bucket that you sweep mm-hmm. into. Yeah, I know you, what you're talking okay. about. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that people, like, I don't know. Do they really call them Cadillacs no, or is that just ne- prison? I've never even heard that. Even really? in prison, I never heard that. In prison, they used to call it, I need a, uh, give me a Cadillac. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> just, that's a prison thing. It's got to be. So you have one of the little buckets and you sweep the garbage into it. So he got one of those mm-hmm. and he got a little face mask so nobody could recognize him. Mm-hmm. And he said, I put on a you know, long sleeve shirt. So I looked like I was somebody who walk, went around sweeping up the place. He said, so he would park in an alleyway and then he'd walk over to the Bank of America and he'd watch it when, when the armored truck showed up. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'd watch it and then I'd make a notation. Get in my car. Come back like two days later, wait around 30 minutes, and then the thing would show up, and I'd mark the time. He did this for about two weeks. Figured out, he's like, wow, you know what? My buddy said this is the route, and he's right. He's not. He's usually within 10 or 15 minutes Mm -hmm. of the correct time. So he thought, okay, so I know I can run up there and grab that bag when the armored truck car driver gets out of the back. Not the driver, sorry, the guy in the back. When he gets out of the back with the bag, I know I can get that bag from that guy. Mm. He decided, he goes, all I have to do is decapacitate him. Incapacitate him. Decapacitate him. That's the name of the word. Incapacitate him. And you ever s- seen those net guns? <clears throat> yeah. Shoot somebody with a net? Yeah. That'd be cool if I can hit him with a net. <laughs> great. You're right. But he made, be comical, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a cartoon. But th- then could you imagine that the guy's in the net with the, holding the bag? Now you got to try to get the bag. Right. So what he decides is, Bear mace. Apparently, there's a mace called bear mace. Oh, yeah. And he said, so I figured I... run a giant can. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. So he he said it shoots a long stream. 20 feet or so. So he said, I figured I'll take it, get a bear mace can, and I'll run up, and I'll shoot the guy with the bear mace, and I'll grab the thing and run. He said, he's going to hit the ground. He said, the fuck, it's horrible. He said, you even get it on your skin, it'll, it'll, it burns the hell out of you. I had him right in the face with it. They're dumb. Oh, yeah, he shot him in the face. They won't be able to see anything. Right. Yeah. So he, he once again, he's watching the place. He knows when they're, the guy's going to show up with the money. He's assuming it's going to be around 100000 because his buddy said it's always around 100000 mm-hmm. And so, but here's the problem. Once again, the problem is, it, it's funny because it, he and I very much, um, you know, kind of looked at our crimes the same. Like I started f- figuring out what are my issues? Mm-hmm. How do I solve these problems? Sure. Um, and so you end up solving, like this solves this, this solves this, this solves this. The next thing you know, you think, oh, great. I- all you're trying to do is solve the crime, not realizing when you look at it from another perspective, from other people's, from you and I's perspective, it turns out brilliant. Like to me, my crime, I was just trying to solve some problems. Mm-hmm. Other people look at it and they go, fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with him, bro. Hey, sorry for interrupting the video, but I want to let you guys know that if you join my Patreon at the top tier, every single month you get a different painting, and the contact information for my Patreon page is in the description. Back to the video. So there was a movie called The Thomas Crown Affair. So Anthony had seen the movie, Mm -hmm. and he thought, that's a perfect way. Like, here's the problem. Running up and getting the bag, anybody can do that. It's getting away. That's the problem. Like running up and getting – anybody can go up to the, to the teller and, and point a gun at them and say, give me the money, and they're going to get some money. It's getting out of the bank, getting in your car, getting away. That's an issue. Well, first of all, you're in a car. Mm-hmm. You're in Seattle, which is made up of these little tiny yeah. islands, and there's all these little bridges, and they can be closed. And, and you, you, typically on these little islands like – or can, and there's a canal system, so there's very, only one or two ways out of every little subdiver, subdivision, every little um, island, every mm-hmm. little whatever you want to call those things. There's very few entrances and exits, so it's not hard to stop. If if they see you jump into a red BMW, it's mm-hmm. not hard to say, okay, great, put a cop here and a cop here. He's in this area. We're going to see a red BMW drive by. We're yeah. going to grab him. Yeah. So he said, so I can't be in a vehicle. So one question is, I can't be in a vehicle. Second one is, I can't get caught 
because I, I, I don't want them to chase me or see me or anybody to be able to figure out who I am. And when the cops show up, they're going to know immediately, the guy ran that way, he jumped into a red BMW. He's got So all of these are problems. So he said, how do I get around that? He had seen the Thomas Crown Affair, and what he decided was, I need decoys. And what he decides to do to get around the police being able to track him is he decides, I'm going to put a, a mask on, mm-hmm. and I'm going to wear a like a white, like a, I think I said a blue long sleeve shirt and blue jeans. Anybody has that in their closet. And I'm going to get one of those sweepers, a little sweeping brush sweeper and a little pickup thing and a bag or, or, or a bag. Those cost like 40 bucks. And so what he just does is he puts an ad on Craigslist mm-hmm. from the Clean Up Seattle Foundation, which is made up. And he says, look. We're paying like fifteen dollars an, an hour. Mm-hmm. Now this is ten years ago, right? 10, 12, 10, 15 years ago. To the to anyone that shows up at the corner of Fifty Sixth Street and Bush Boulevard, whatever the name of the street was, mm-hmm. right there at the Bank of America, you show up here with a mask, blue jeans, a long sleeve shirt, a sweeper. And he, he gives them the website on where they can buy this material. And they're going to pay like 15 or actually I think it was like 18 bucks an hour, 18 mm-hmm. or 20 bucks. So it was a high. He's like, it wasn't so high that it was unreasonable, but it was much higher than anybody was paying because companies are laying people off left and right. He said, so I know I was going to get at least four or five people. He ends up getting like 20 people show up. So they end up, people start, people buy this stuff. And they show up. He says, show up at 9.30 on Tuesday, whatever day it was, Mm -hmm. at this corner. If the man or if the site manager or whatever your boss, the boss, if the cleanup foundation manager isn't there at exactly 9.30, start cleaning the area. He will show up within 30 minutes because he knew that's when the the, that's when the uh, armored truck shows up. Mm So Anthony shows up with those people. He's standing there sweeping up everything. Yeah. Aloha. There's 20 people there. They're all dressed with the face masks. They've all got the uh, bags to throw garbage in. They've got the sweepers. They have the yellow vest. They're all wearing the same stuff. Mm-hmm. He goes, man, it was, they were all, we, we were like clones, bro. There's 20 of them. He said, man, within 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. The, the truck shows up, pulls up in the parking lot. He said, I made sure I was in that general area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as soon as they pull up, he goes, and we're spread out. Now it's go time. The guy gets out. Imagine how, how fast your heart's going. Oh, my God. As soon as that truck pulls up and you got all those people there and you're like, right now, you, I can walk away. Nobody knows. And nobody knows anything. But you're right, you're right at that the fucking point where you that decision. You get fucking, then as soon as you start going into it, that's when it's just like, whew, all right, let's fucking do it. I, you know what's funny is um, I interviewed that guy, uh, Batman, mm-hmm. the, uh, the bank robber guy. And he talks about it, about how he had a, a, a bank robbery that was set up by another guy. Mm-hmm. And, went, and so it was him, another guy, and the guy that set up the bank robbery. He said when they actually got there, they all got in the car. They're all about to go to, into the bank. The guy that set it up starts bawling, just crying, crying. He looks at him. They're like, "What are you doing, bro? What's going on?" Mm-hmm. And he's like, "I can't do it. I can't do it." He's like, "I, I, I'm, I'm so freaked out right now. I'm so I'm, I'm trembling." And this is a guy who burglarized houses. He'd done mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. He's going in a bank. Yeah, he's just. I mean, hands. You know, they've got guns. He just, he couldn't do it. <laughs> they said, I literally dropped them off across the street, and the guy watched those two of them <laughs> rob the bank. <laughs> But yeah, I can imagine getting there and being just like I just not being able to do it. Like you can walk away, like you're terrified. Your yeah. heart's going nuts. So, but not Anthony. <laughs> Anthony so what does it. Next, he takes three or four steps forward and he pulls out the bear mace and boom, shoots him the guy right in the face. Mm-hmm. Guy hits the ground. Anthony grabs the he grabs the bag mm-hmm. and goes running. Now, the other problem is remember is jumping in a car and trying to get out of those areas is yeah. difficult because now you're stuck on the road in a car. It's not hard to track a blue car, a red car, a white car. It's not that hard. Mm-hmm. 
So what he does is there is a canal and Anthony had left a full inter- inner tube in the canal. So he runs and he jumps on the inner tube and he, and the, the canal, the water goes pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. He told me he had started off, he had a, a, a wave runner, like a jet ski. Mm-hmm. He did have a jet ski and he said he tried to go up the canal, but it was so rocky that it had cracked the jet ski and actually, you know, filled it up. You know, they're, they're hollow, like yeah. they flo- cracked it. He hit a rock with it, cracked it and, it, and it broke. He said, so I realized it was just too shallow for me to use a jet ski because you could always hit a rock or yeah, a inner tube inner tube so he, he runs and as he's running he takes his mask off and throws it on the ground Fuck. but you know he said i didn't think about it because he said i would my adrenaline i don't even remember doing it he said my adrenaline was going so fast he runs jumps on the inner tube and then takes the inner tube and goes downstream and cuts across he then takes the inner tube, he leaves it on the bank, he jumps into the trunk of a buddy's car. A buddy Mm. has a car there waiting with the trunk up. Jumps in the trunk and drives off. As he's driving off, he opens up the bag and starts looking for dye patches and everything. Can you imagine being in the car and a dye patch goes in the trunk? In the trunk? Oh, yeah. You're gonna hop, you're gonna hop out like one of them fucking blue dicks that beat the drums out in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a guy from Blue Man Group. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so what he does is he um, so the guy drives right down the street. He drives him like maybe eight blocks, pulls over. Anthony jumps out, doesn't have it, leaves the money. He also told me that that guy didn't want to do it. Like like he he at the last minute tried to change his mind. Like yeah. and and he was I think the guy was supposed to do it with him and didn't do it. And he said, look, at the least at the very least you have to drive the car. Like go get the car. Mm-hmm. So he and he said, I'll give you this much money. Like the guy was just the, another guy. Guy's terrified. He's crying. He's upset. He's mm-hmm. terrified. But he does drive the car. So he drives Anthony down the street eight blocks. Anthony jumps jumps out of the car, but Anthony's dressed okay. Mm-hmm. He is wet. He's soaking wet. He said from the from the waist down, he said, I'm soaking wet. But you couldn't tell. Like I'm wearing khakis or blue jeans. Mm-hmm. He walks into a title company because remember, he's a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. So he walks into a title company and he says, and the uh, secretary is there and he walks in and he goes, hey, Jennifer, um, I was wondering, can I get a copy of my HUD statement, my, my closing statement when I closed that loan about two months ago? And she's like, yeah, sure, no problem, Anthony. Mm-hmm. And just then he said, I could hear the sirens of the police and he goes what's that do you hear that <laughs> and she goes yeah i do he goes i wonder what happened like he tried to make sure that she knows i'm standing yeah. here alibi. with you right you're my alibi mm-hmm. when we hear the, and i'm way one i'm across the canal i'm down from the area and i'm mm-hmm. eight blocks away i couldn't have gotten here in that amount of time he asks her what time it is. He makes a time. He makes a phone call. Like he's doing everything to document. This is where I was. And you couldn't even run at a full sprint and make it here. Mm-hmm. He said she never even notices that I'm dripping wet from the waist down. Never says a fucking thing. He's literally he's like a puddle of water is forming <laughs> around him. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're interested in getting a painting done by me, my contact information is in the description box. Enjoy the video. So she gives him the HUD statement. He talks. He chats everybody out, up, and then he leaves. Walks outside, meets up with his buddy, and they've got like four hundred thousand dollars. He gives his cuts his buddy off a little bit of money, mm-hmm. and um, never told on his buddy. No, he never told on him. Anthony. Never told on anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he he ends up going to like I think he and his wife end up getting into some kind of an argument or something, and he goes to Vegas. Parties in Vegas for a while. He, um, what else is he? He, he basically, I, I want to say it's months later. It's a few months later. Mm-hmm. But basically, the FBI show up. They interview everybody. Oh, so while he's in the title company mm-hmm. and the cops arrive, keep, keep in mind what the, the description that the, um, the guard gives them. So the guard and the bank employees and everybody is giving the description. It's a guy. He's wearing a blue shirt, or, you know, a long sleeve shirt. He's got blue jeans on. He's got a mask on. He's holding one of those sweeper things. And they're everywhere. <laughs> There's 20 of them. 
They start arresting and handcuffing and zip tying all these guys. Really? Standing around. They're all like, what the, f-? you know, boom, they're getting, get on the ground. Zip, zip. They zip tie them. They get their information. They're questioned. Most of these people don't even know that the robbery occurred. There was no gun. Yeah. No car, no car squealed out of the parking lot. Mm-hmm. He ran up, shot the guy with the fucking mace. Boom, grabbed the thing well, and ran. They weren't expecting it. Yeah. So the, if you're 150 feet away or even 50 feet away and your back's turned, you don't notice that any of this happened. Mm-hmm. So these people are just being suddenly attacked by the police and screaming to get down the ground. They're in handcuffs. So they're questioned. They're let go. Uh, in, um, I think they brought a few people downtown, guys that were close to his size. Like mm-hmm. if you're a, a, an overweight, short woman, you're not going to, you know, they're not bringing you downtown. It's clearly a guy that robbed the place. Yeah. But some of the guys get brought downtown. They get questioned. Um, they figured out it was a ruse. Yeah. They, they realize right away, this is ridiculous. This is the Thomas Crown affair. <laughs> this is exactly what this is. And um anthony goes to vegas he parties he has a good time months go by they question everybody they question everybody in the area they've got tips coming in Mm -hmm. and the cops you know but the cops are casing the area they're they're canvas sorry canvassing the area they can't find anybody the fbi can't find anybody so months go by and the fbi goes you know what let's let's start over again like something's wrong here like Something we ha- we got to be able to figure this out. So they start mm-hmm. over again, and they just happen to come across. Because keep in mind, when the FBI comes in, like they'll put like two officers on it, and then they ask the local cops to help, like go through all the tips and this and that. Well, what happens is after a couple of months, the tips stop. So these guys go back and say, the FBI says, let's go through all the tips again because they didn't read all of them. So they go back and they read one tip, which was from a guy who worked on a road crew and the guy on the road crew had called the police and said listen i have a there's a homeless guy that told came up to me and told me he knew who robbed the bank he needed to talk to the police he didn't quite understand that he wasn't the police or something he's like okay well what are you telling me for i'm just telling you we i gotta i I know who did it i i got evidence i got this he's like man get out of here and threw him but then he thought about it and said i'm gonna call this in he called it in and said look this is a homeless guy that's in the area Mm -hmm. so the fbi looked at it and said you know let's 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 talk to this guy so they talked to the guy they call the road crew guy road crew guy goes all I can tell you is he was an older white guy with a beard, long hair, straggly, and he had a little dog with him. Mm-hmm. I've seen him around. So the, the two FBI agents go get a bunch of McDonald's hamburgers, and they go down to where the, in that same area where the homeless people sh- mm-hmm. hang out. They start passing out hamburgers, and they say, look, we're looking for a guy with long hair, white guy, older, beard, and a little dog. After a couple of people, they go, oh, that's Leroy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Leroy stays in a bus out in the woods off of this street. Wow. They go to that street, and as they pull, they they park their car in the woods. They're Mm -hmm. walking through towards the bus. Leroy comes out of the bus with his little dog and says, I've been waiting for months for you guys to show up. (laughs) And they're like, you know, hey. And he goes, yeah, this about that bank robbery? And they go, yeah. And he goes, yeah. I, I got, I got the guy's license plate. What happened was, hmm. when, when Anthony had, was casing the place, right? Mm-hmm. When he was um, watching the bank and watching the armored truck come in and the whole thing for those weeks, Leroy was in the parking lot, was in the alleyway with his dog. Mm-hmm. Anthony even saw him. He remembers see, I remember seeing him, but he's just some old homeless guy. He wasn't paying attention to me, but he was paying attention to him. And Anthony would take off his mask, take all of his stuff, his yellow vest, roll it up and stick it into the um into the bushes and leave it there. So the old guy had seen him hide his stuff one, once or twice, went over and unraveled the whole thing and looked at it and thought, this is weird. Mm. He's got a yellow thing. He's got this stuff. He's got like, why is he keeping it here? Mm-hmm. But he rolled it up and put it back. And he said, you know what? If I see this guy again, I'm going to take his tag number down. So he said, sure enough, he'd seen him like two or three times. A couple days later, Anthony showed up again, put the stuff on. The old man was watching. The old man wrote down the tag number and it was Emily's car. So the cops go, okay, they look up Emily's car. They go, okay, well, that, yeah, that's a woman. 
But this woman is on the title Mm -hmm. to a house with a man. They look up Anthony Curcio. Sure enough, Anthony Curcio is like six foot one, athletic, the right age. Mm -hmm. So they start following Anthony because one of the other things I didn't mention was the only piece of evidence they had, they have no evidence, but they do have the mask Mm -hmm. and they do have DNA from the mask. But they ran the DNA against everything they had, and they couldn't match it. So the only piece of equipment or only piece of evidence they have is the mask. So they watch Anthony. They watch Anthony for whatever weeks Mm -hmm. and weeks. And at some point, I think Anthony was dipping or something and had thrown his dip away, or was it a can of soda? Whatever it was, they Mm -hmm. go and they get a copy of his DNA, and sure enough, it's a perfect match. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video. Wanted to let you guys know one of the ways I pay for all of this is through Patreon subscriptions. So if you join my Patreon at the top tier, you get a different painting every single month. The contact information for Patreon is in the description box. Back to the video. Now they now they can rest. Now they come in and they arrest him. When they arrest him, they start adding up all of the, like, here's some cell phones, here's this. He's trying to tell them that's not true. This is what happened, boom, mm-hmm. boom, boom. But the, the truth is, is that they've got, as they unraveled the whole thing and saw who he hung out with and who he talks to before and after, they had ended up getting a warrant. And I think they ended up talking to one of the guys that worked at the Brinks place that he did know somehow. Mm-hmm. And they talked to him. One of those guys had rolled over on him. So now he's got one guy. But this was after they got him. Mm-hmm. Like, had he not dropped the mask, it would have been a per- the perfect crime. Yep. But now he's got a guy that's rolled over They had on no him. evidence. Yeah, they have no evidence. So now they've got a guy that rolled over on him, and they've got um, they end up recoup, uh, uh, finding some of the money, and they've got the the DNA. Where they how they find the money? Where was that at? I think the guy gave him the the other guy that said, "Hey, okay, this is what happened, and I can tell you where I think he's put some of the money. Like it was in a safe somewhere, and they no found shit. went and found some of the money. I forget exactly. I'm a little iffy on that, but." He ends up getting, so he ends up getting, um, yeah, he ends up getting uh, arrested and he pleads guilty. There was, keep in mind, it, there was no, there was no gun. So he didn't get a lot of time. I think he got like four or five years. We could find out for sure. He got, take Wow. Didn't, so, so they didn't recoup all the money. Oh, he was uh, eventually arrested and sentenced to six years in federal prison. Hmm. So he, here's the thing about Anthony. Anthony, when we were locked up, he used to write letters to his kids all the time. And he started actually writing children's books. Mm -hmm. This is where it takes, like it goes like, whoo, completely off, you know, in a different direction. So while he's locked up, he starts writing these children's books Mm -hmm. um, to his kids because he he genuinely felt like just, just like a piece of garbage for what happened. Like he didn't, Looking back, like at the at that time, as a guy being a father and a husband, he was desperate to try and provide for his family. And like most guys, you know, that's what you think you're supposed to do, and it is what you're supposed to do. But what you feel inept when you can't do it, and mm-hmm. you get desperate. He got desperate. Well, he he obviously, there, looking back after you're incarcerated, you, he, he realized there was a hundred different things I could have done. You know, one of those was just staying in my house after the foreclosure and waiting and do working construction or working whatever I had to do. But that wasn't the choice he made. So, but he felt horrible and he used to write letters to his kids all the time and he started writing children's books. First, it started with drawing pictures. Then he started drawing, he started writing children's books to his children and he would write pictures and stuff and they would come see him. And um, uh, while he was in there, he, he, he uh, helped write. There was a book that was written on him, uh, which he hated. He hated the book. Uh, when it was done, it was basically an after-school special, which yeah. he just felt hor- he just, he felt like that wasn't a correct um, representation. Represent- yeah, absolutely of, of his story. Anyway, um, but he got out, and he he had written all these books. So he got out. He'd written these books, and he started publishing the books, and then he started giving away the books. And then he sold some books. And then mm-hmm. he was started pushing the books. And at some point, he had written one of the children's books. And some, I want to say it was like the, 
I want to say, I, I'm probably wrong on this, bro. It's like the ACLU or something, like the, or, or I forget who it was, but they, they basically picked up the book. And they were like, this is like, and somehow or another they'd read it and it got popular. And they said, hey, this is like the book of the year or something. And the next thing you know, he's doing this program, this program, and it blew up. He makes, and now that's what he, that's all he does. He All he does is sell books, children's books. He's written dozens of them. Mm-hmm. And he's made a ton of money doing, um, selling children's books. And that's what he does. Right now, that's what he does. He also is right now he's built the largest indoor Lego city in the nation. What? And <laughs> that's the last thing I – last time I talked to him months ago, they were about to – it was in Seattle. It was some kind of – he rented some massive warehouse and built this massive Lego. Oh, he's got a whole thing. He's got a whole like a Lego line, the whole thing. I've probably read about it, yeah. It's huge. Like this is a guy who just went from one extreme to the other. Um, Anthony Curcio, Legos City, Washington. You got to get better at Google and shit. Man. Why? What? What am I supposed to say? <laughs> it's insane, bro. Like, I mean, th- this guy went from I can't find it. This all I, only thing that comes up, probably because I don't think he pushes. I don't think he pushes the. I think he's probably tried to move away from. Oh, it was the NBA. Remember I said the ACLU? It was the NBA Basketball League Coloring Activity Book. That's what he won. Anthony Curcio, he won that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Something about Lego City in Seattle, Washington, and he's got this huge Lego City, and he sells books, and it's all about kids. And he's – like, talk about a guy that's completely – yeah, reinvented himself. Well, you know, it's it's, it's the difference between you know, um, uh, I, I hate to use the term, but you know, retarded fucking street guys who are just one fuck up away from spending the rest of their life in prison, and then you know, one guy who's extremely intelligent apparently, uh, you know, just was fucking around and then did yeah, he made did it. it. Yeah, you know, committed a crime, but it's not, you know, it doesn't really surprise me that he's you know doing so well now, honestly. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. No, he 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 uh, he definitely. I, well, I think what happened is he went to prison and it just straightened it. It it it, it set him on the right path. He realized yeah. that you know how badly things can go wrong. Yeah, and so it just it just it got his head right. You got to get your head right, and it got his head right. So that's the Anthony Curcio story. Good story. Good guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I like I, I like Anthony. Yeah, you've met him before. I well, you, you met him after prison too. Yeah, I, well, I was in L.A. and yeah. Uh, yeah, we met up and he interviewed me for some project that never really went anywhere. But right, right. Yeah. But anyway, so is that it? Right, we're good. All right. So if you like the video, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the bell so you get notified of videos like this. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section. Share the video to all your friends and family, and I will try and answer. I try and answer any comments worth answering. I make a real effort to do that, and I appreciate it, and see ya.